Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for a trading session on Tuesday, 10th of July 2018. Please be sure to fit its trade signal, signals, and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so um, tackling uh, European markets this week, then basically we've had a uh, uh, an interesting rally on the US markets, given the fact that we've got trade war concerns in the background as well. Obviously, not just China, it's also with Europe as well. So it certainly seems like the markets certainly have ignored that altogether. Post NFP last week, jobs data, it seems like uh, market participants are focusing on stronger earnings, stronger job growth, and that obviously would negate any potential trade war concerns. Whether that's obviously uh, misconstrued uh, and being misread, again, is a different question altogether. But uh, you have to respect the strength in U.S. equities. Now, I had a S&P 500 potential top reversal on the S uh, on U.S. equities, and that obviously was going to lead for further declines in the U U.K. and European indices, and that hasn't been the case. I mean, I was uh, keeping uh, a close eye on this potential pattern here with the potential right shoulder max uh, upside. I was expecting it was gap fill around 27.54, and I've certainly been proven wrong with the potential overnight high of 27.93.94. Okay, so very, very impressive on the S&P 500. You have to respect the potential strength there, even in the face of, obviously, uh, concerns regarding trade war with China and potential tariffs as well going forward. So that certainly doesn't bode well there, even with Europe, obviously, with Canada, Japan, etc. Okay, so uh, again, like I said, you have to respect that. In terms of going back home, then into the UK, uh, we certainly have Brexit chaos at the moment with two senior uh, individuals resigning. One of them obviously is an imbecile, so from that perspective, probably is risk positive really whenever an imbecile resigns, such as Mr. Johnson. But either way, that's uh, that's how we're potentially reading it at present. Okay, so that's how we're interpreting things in terms of the uh, the actual markets. Uh, in terms of economic data, then overnight we've had Chinese uh, inflation numbers coming more or less in line. Uh, Italian industrial production came in weaker. German ZEW numbers have come in weaker. French data came in weaker this morning as well. Industrial and uh, Manufacturing, both numbers coming weaker. In Germany, uh, in terms of German cars, BMW raising prices in China. Again, that certainly isn't, doesn't, doesn't bode well. Mr. Draghi yesterday was upbeat. Okay, he was certainly uh, certainly bullish on the economy. And let's see if that can that certainly uh, certainly materialises. Either way, uh, UK numbers have certainly come in weaker as well. Manufacturing coming in weaker. Uh, trade balance has slightly improved. But again, that's distorted to a large extent. Uh, GDP numbers out of the UK came as more or less in line. But again, uh, fears of obviously going forward. Uh, in terms of the future, ZEW obviously with trade war concerns that they are going to get weaker regardless. Okay, uh, ZEW numbers out of Germany, like I said, came in weaker in Eurozone as well, so that doesn't bode well either. Okay, so going forward, then it looks like uh, again, US markets certainly are leading the way higher. How long can that last? That's the question. Okay, uh, we've got a political uncertainty in the UK at present, and that certainly spreads into the rest of the Eurozone as well, so keep an eye on that aspect as well. Okay. I think that's a good summation of fundamentals, really. Let's look into technicals now. Uh, German DAX on the daily chart has closed that gap on the on the uh, the key uh, gap that was left behind at 12.580. He certainly has closed that. We've paused now. As you can see, it's a bearish engulfing day so far after we gap higher. Uh, again, 12.600, 12.580, you certainly key resistance on the daily chart, uh, especially given the fact that we've got weaker ZEW numbers as well. Okay, uh, so it doesn't bode well. So again, it's all about a gap fill. Okay, previous support equals resistance, as we already know, around the 12600 and 12580. If we continue to thrust iron, then there are two more gaps above that you can certainly potentially target. Okay, and then also you've got horizontal resistance in this zone as well. So watch out there. Okay, uh, and that certainly is the status quo in terms of the German DAX at the moment. Okay, 10 minute chart. Uh, let's just quickly go to a 10 minute chart. Sorry, 60 minute chart gives you more of an insight here with gap fills already drawn. Okay, uh, the 10 minute chart. Okay, so look at a 10 minute chart again, making a lower high. Okay, we've gapped higher and obviously we reject it straight away and we push lower. If we do push lower, then it looks like support was around 12,500. Okay, on the downside, so watch out for 12,500. If we continue to flush lower, then you can clearly see that gap at 12,320. You've got support at 12,420 as well. Okay, moving on to the uh, French CAC now. Uh, French CAC, uh, weaker data today on the French CAC, so again, that certainly will keep it at bay. Uh, you do have previous, uh, well, you've got Fibonacci retracement here between 5, uh, 400 at 50 percent. Then you've got Fib 61 at 5440. So again, 5440 equals gap fill. That's a good zone to potentially short from my perspective. Okay, so looking for potential weakness there. 
60 minute chart as well you can see that we've got key resistance coming up now on the french gap around this uh, 5 4 20 zone looking for gap fill again it's not got gap fill is at 5 4 50 and you've got 5 500 but you are looking at previous support equals resistance as you can see here okay looking for key resistance on the uh, french cac in terms of the FTSE 100, let's just go to the FTSE now. Again, FTSE uh, beaten down by political uncertainty. Key horizontal resistance at 7700, looking for the markets to remain below. Uh, okay, on the 60 minute chart, as you can see here, daily chart as well, you've got key horizontal resistance at 61 to 75% retracement resistance as well. 10 minute chart at the moment, we did flush lower on the back of obviously concerns with regards to Brexit. We are making a comeback at the moment, which is quite impressive. Again, certainly is having helped by oil to a large extent and obviously strength in US equities as well. If we do flush lower, then you are looking at potential pivot lower there at 7677. And you've got previous support below, previous resistance equal support, 7650, 7630. And then you've got uh, gap fill at uh, 7620. So watch out for those zones below. Okay, I think that's a good summation really of European indices. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers and take advantage of the app there as well. And also you've got this potential bonus that's always uh, in play as well with regards to CFDs.com. On that note, take care. Goodbye.